I got these three questions uh, the other day in a YouTube email and you can see that he's wondering about the earth ground connection on a oscilloscope if it's still isolated or another way to view it would be is it safe to connect and a couple of questions on transformerless radios and one with a power transformer again hooking up a ground to it from like an oscilloscope or from a signal tracer well I thought the place to start would be to take a look at what power actually is if your power is on a power pole or even if it's on the ground you've got a transformer that lowers the very very high voltage down to our usable 120 volts AC and also 240 volts AC now if you take a look at the center the center connection is the neutral but it also is the earth ground connection these three leads go to the house and inside of the house is the circuit breaker box and I'm only going to be talking about one of the 120 volt connections you can see that in the circuit breaker box that's where we get our white wire, our green wire, and the black wire. The white wires are neutral. The green wire is our earth ground. And of course it's the same thing. And our black wire is the hot wire. Now I've got a little video showing that. I've got the wire coming out of the wall socket and set up on the workbench. Okay, here's the setup. Turn the meter on, set it to AC volts, and the wires on the left are directly out of the wall socket. And you can see between the black wire and the green wire we have voltage, and between the black wire and the white wire we have voltage and between the green and the white we have no voltage I'm going to put that on ohms and measure between the white and the green and we have about 8 ohms a little bit over I'm going to measure the voltage one more time between the black and the green and the black and the white and no voltage between the green and the white okay I'm gonna put this on voltage AC the yellow wires on the right are from the secondary from the isolation transformer and we have about 125 volts there now I'm going to measure from one side of the isolation transformer to power coming from the wall and we see that we get some AC voltage readings and we still got our 125 volts from the secondary here I have very carefully connected two leads to a 25 watt bulb and we're going to test where the voltage is with that remember it's just a 25 watt bulb so it doesn't take much to light it and we've got power where we expected 
Now remember the digital meter said we had power here, but we don't really. The meter is so sensitive that it's reading voltage through the capacitance of the windings. So as you can see, we've got our voltage where we expect it to be. And what I'm showing here, we are definitely isolated from commercial power. Now I'm going to hook up the ground from my oscilloscope, which the center lead is earth ground. And that's what this lead is right here. It's the ground from the oscilloscope. And of course it is plugged in to the wall. And now we're going to probe around and see where that light will light. Not on either side of the isolation transformer or the neutral or the ground. But right there, of course, we have power. And it would not be safe to connect the scope to that lead. I always use an isolation transformer. Not only am I isolated from commercial power as we saw in the videos, but out of the socket in that room that I'm working in, it's on a 40 amp circuit breaker from the wall. On the other side, the isolated side, it can only produce about one to one and a half amps, which is a lot safer, but you still have to be very careful. You still got 120 volts there, but you are isolated from that 40 amp circuit from commercial power. There were two questions about hooking up the scope and uh, signal generator to the chassis, you know, when it's safe and where to hook them up. I normally use the chassis or chassis and with the isolation transformer it's always safe to hook the scope up to it and your signal generator and you have to keep in mind the frequencies that we're working with it'll be 455 KC about or if it's FM 10.7 megahertz now the return path for those frequencies in this case is going to be that C6 capacitor. Those frequencies will pass through that dot one microfarad capacitor like it wasn't there, like it was a direct short. And I've got um, the whole diagram links to these chassis if you want to download them and, and take a look at the entire diagram. The other question was on transformers, power transformers in the chassis, where to hook up the test equipment, the oscilloscope and signal tracer. Well, you can see that on the power side, the primary of that transformer, it's not co connected anything except to a switch and then into power. And again, if you put your oscilloscope and signal tr or your signal generator on the chassis the return path is going to be through the capacitors in that chassis that are connected to ground. I hope this helps in answering some questions 
about isolation transformers and how you can hook up your oscilloscope and signal generators. And as you know, I always have the chassis of the radio plugged into an isolation transformer without fail. It's very important. Thanks for watching.